two, three, fuck it. My darling, I love you, 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 I Grills with a Z, uh, and I actually I thought the song was a, was a Paul Wall song, but it's a it's a Nelly song, featuring Paul, in it, though. Paul Wall. Featuring Paul, Paul Wall. In it. Yeah, You're yeah. halfway there. And um, and you know, shout out to uh, first of all, shout out to Paul Wall for 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 putting one of our Asian brothers on the map, dog. Um, what's that? What's that dude's name? Young Jimmy, Young Johnny, what? his uh his jewelry guy. Oh uh, yeah 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 Young Timmy or something like that. Know. Young sure. Timmy to win. And uh, <laughs> no, because because he's Vietnamese. Uh, oh, anyway. All he does is win, win, win. <laughs> yeah, all he does is win, win, win. <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Good Times with the Boys podcast. Uh, you know what? I always say this, but today, today's going to today's actually going to be a very, very good one. Um, uber good one, as as the kids say. And uh, th- that the reason why is, uh, you know, we've been we've been trying to bring on guests and e- every guest we bring on ha- has been such a delight. But I just get I just get a feeling about this guy. All right. I get a good feeling deep in my loins. All right. A feeling that he can maybe scratch. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Rob the Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, help me in welcoming to the podcast, Mr. Josh Castillo, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much. It is a great honor to be here. That was such a great intro. I feel like you guys practiced this the whole day today. Well, as we were waiting to come on, only three times. Oh, see, it. Yeah. Practice makes perfect, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> For the listeners, uh, why don't you introduce a little bit about yourself? <clears throat> yes, uh, my name is Josh Castillo. Some people know me as DJ Jcast. Some people know me as the kid that's blind in his left eye um, that gradually gains weight every year. Um, <laughs> but trust me, I'm the same person. Um, 100 pounds ago, 100 pounds later. Hey, um, that's deep. Yeah, yeah. L- I practice that. <laughs> <laughs> How long you been in the in the DJ game for? Uh, DJ game for almost a decade now. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So uh, it's it's going up there. What got you started? What were some early memories? Like what what wanted what made you want to get into being a DJ? It's quite simple. Um, why anybody gets into anything? They broke up with their girlfriend. Oh. oh. So before we went live. You were mentioning you went to cams. Yes. So boom, nostalgia. Like why I became oh. a DJ hey because oh. I was dating someone from cams. Whoa, whoa, okay. Whoa. Okay. Expose time. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not gonna. I got yearbooks right there, fam. Bro, what year did you graduate? Oh <laughs> seven. Uh, you know what? It very well. She might be in there. Well, she, um, well you, you'll let. Yeah. What year? So, so we. I graduated 2010. So did she. Okay. Um, but I, I really don't want to say her name, Leanne, but I just... Oh, oh shit! <laughs> no, no, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> let, let, let me just start Yo. by saying how great of a person she is. There we go. Because we're really cool now. Like, she's she's dope inside and out. Yeah. So that's why I feel like I could say something like that, because we're really cool. Um. So, you know, shout out to her. But, uh, yeah. I started DJing because we broke up and it became like a hobby. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I ended up just making the big investment to get my first controller. Yeah. Um, And then from there, I did my first like paid party. Hey. hey, Yeah. What was that? um, It was a... So I used to work at Mulligan's. Uh So shout out to all my people. Shout out to Mulligan's. That worked at Mulligan's. Shout out to Mulligan's. Yeah. No. Funnest job, hands down, like that I've ever had. That's what I hear. Yeah. Yeah. so he was turning 21 and I DJed his party and actually random. Like I saw him last week because I was DJing in Long Beach and he came and I saw him last week. And um, so, yeah, I DJed his 21st birthday party and I didn't have that many songs. Like I repeated a lot of songs, which is like one of my pet peeves. But you got to learn, you know? Yeah, right, right, right. Um, Can you remember some of the songs that you played at that time? Yeah, man. Um, there's a song. uh I think it's by uh, Afrojack. 
Oh, okay. Take over control. Ooh, so wow, it was okay. in that phase, right? When like EDM was still kind of new. Yeah. But yeah. then I was doing a lot of like hip hop too. So black and yellow. Okay. With Khalifa. But I was doing the perp and yellow. Ooh. Um, yeah. Remix at mm. the time. Okay. And I copied everything that Power 106 did uh, because I didn't know how to be creative with my sets because I didn't, I didn't ha- really have all the tools mm-hmm. to do that like I do now. Mm. Um, so I, I replayed a lot of songs. Chris Brown, yeah. Always. Oh, yeah. Um, I still play that to this day, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, classic mm-hmm. with a capital K. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. For sure. No um, no Nelly Grills. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we worked at Mulligan's, so none of us could afford grills. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got um, you. Unless we won it for in the arcade. Tickets, yeah. <laughs> And they're plastic. Yeah. yeah, and then you get poisoning, and it's a big thing. Was uh, DJ J Cast your name from the beginning? Yeah. Um, so there's been conflicting stories about how I got my name. Okay. My cousin said he gave it to me. I thought I got it from a friend's house. Um, so I really don't know the origin of the name, but it just stuck. Yeah. Um, but, you know, do I regret it? Sometimes, because people will come up to me and be like, yo, DJ Cast. And I turn around like, who? <laughs> and then there's people who like know me pretty well and still say, yo, DJ Cast. Mm. And I look at them like, hey, good to see you. We've been friends for X amount of years, but it's J Cast, but whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I'm starting to drop the DJ. Okay. And I don't mean to like copy everybody else, but um, everyone's having trouble with the double J. DJ J. Uh, oh, gotcha. That's yeah. why they they put that DJ cast. Yeah. Um. Uh. So on Instagram, uh, it's DJ underscore J cast. That's my cheap plug right there. Um, but on my name on my profile, it just says J cast. So are people calling you J cast now? A lot of people call me J. Like yo J, what up? Mm-hmm. Um, and then some people call me Josh. Mm. I don't introduce myself as J cast though. Okay. You know what I'm saying because um. That's kind of like a dick move. That's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what up, bro? It's J Cast. Yeah. Like, no, like, I'm Josh. Like, I was born Josh. Mm-hmm. You know, like, that's just my alias. Yeah. You know, and uh, people want to call me J Cast. Like, that's cool. So you didn't want to go by the J Cast? You know what? The J Cast? That's a valid option. I didn't know how to spell that. Like, I don't know how many W's were needed. And There's ease. like two U's. Remember that scene in uh, Harold and Kumar when the exactly. like, yeah, yeah, cop yeah. pulls him over? It's how do you spell Kumar? <laughs> <laughs> You've been in it for a while now. And who knows? Maybe there's some aspiring DJs who are listening to this or who will listen to this. When you first started and kind of looking back, what were some challenges, some obstacles that you had to get over before you kind of felt like, and maybe you don't now, but maybe to a point where you feel like, okay, like, I, I got this. Like, this is normal for me now. I still don't feel that way. Yeah. Um, I have this mentality of just always being hungry and just always being a student of the game. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I've been blessed to be linked up with a lot of mentors who are, you know, way older than me. So whatever they tell me, I'm always going to be a student of the game. And even when I meet DJs who are younger than me, I still feel like there's something I can learn. Um, there was one point though, just very recently where, um, this, this guy I met, uh, he was seeking advice on how to kind of start his company that services the nightlife industry. And for him to say like, how did you do it? You know, and, and him just saying like, how did I do it made me feel like, okay, I must be doing something if someone recognizes, right. You know what I've been doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think. I'm I'm like always trying to stay grounded and just remember like I'm always going to be a student of the game. That's good. Because technology is like always changing, yeah. evolving, booming. Now, as a student of the game, you're still always learning. You're trying to tweak things and things like that. What's what's been your creative process? Like, how do you prep for uh, a set? Like, it. How do you? What goes to your mind? That's a good question because um, I really uh, base it off the crowd that's there that night. Okay. Um, I used to want to prep my sets and just get some songs together. Um, but I feel like anybody can get the hottest songs that are out right now, put them together and just play them. Okay. Uh, and alcohol has a big, uh, factor to it, right? Like everyone can be drunk and I could play all the hottest songs and they'll be like, 
A. I think A is the number one word that everyone says mm, for when, sure. when you know you're lit. Yeah. You know, Uber was kind of there when you said, yeah, you know, yeah. Uber interesting or whatever. But it's A. Like A Y Y Y Y Y E. And um so now I really base everything off the crowd. Okay. Um, and I have to like play with them and see what works and what doesn't. Because believe it or not, YG Big Bank may not work all the time. You know what I'm saying? And like that's the number one song out right now. Like you'll hear A if you played it. Like I could bring you to one of my shows. I'll let you play it. I, I'll let you. I'll tell you do this, and you'll hear everyone in the crowd go A. So it's really just based off the crowd and and knowing who your demographic is. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is there a certain way you like to... Because uh, certain DJs like to have a signature, uh, whether it be the type of style that they play or the way they end or the way they open. Is there... Uh, I guess if you're trying to feel out the crowd... Well, I mean, because when you get there, you really don't know the crowd, right? So preemptively, do you, do you have like a signature sign-on or a signature intro that you... Like to start off with? You know, it, it really depends on what time slot you're at and where you're at. Because I could play at midnight at like a bar, but I do have a signature intro like that, mm. but it wouldn't really work. Now, if I played midnight at a big nightclub, you know, an intro like that would work because I'd be essentially the headliner because mm. I'm starting at midnight. Yeah. Mm. Um, but it, uh, if, if there's a DJ playing before me, I really base it off what he or she's doing and kind of seeing the crowd and whatever they're dropping see if it works and just kind of feel off that gotcha jeremy what would be your uh what's your what's your call what do you do oh mm. um well i think it, it would start with so it would start with something low like some people are people are hearing it yeah it's like you know you know you know what they do in school back in the day right if you can hear me clap once if you can hear me clap twice, you know, yeah. then uh, hoorah kind of thing, right? Is that what so you're going to do? It, it'll, be like, it'll, it'll be a slow little buildup. <laughs> you can hear me clap once. It, yeah. <laughs> at, a, at a bar, you're like, wait, what? What did he just say? <laughs> Why is everyone me... clapping? Or... Yeah. <laughs> I feel like everybody goes through that in school. So, like, habitually, they just be like, wait, what, what happened? Exactly. What, what do we do? What just happened to me? You just made the crowd interactive. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's either that or uh, because, you know, in between sets or in between DJ sets, it'll... It'll kind of close down, and then it'll be quiet. There's people just talking and all that stuff. Uh, either that or like a big bang. Just would be like, oh, shit, and everyone's looking. And then I'll just come up and be like, hi. And, and, then, and, then I'll, and then I'll start my set. You know. So you're not even going to start with music. You're just going to – you'll have the guys turn off the lights and be like, <clears throat> hi. No, no. Before that, oh. it's, it's, like, it's like a loud – Whatever it is, it could be a car horn, a train <laughs> horn, uh, do, 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 but like loud, 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 loud as fuck. So people are just like, oh my God. And then they're awake, they're ready, they're in that mindset already. <laughs> yeah. You know, some there shit their go. pants and they're ready to go already. Yeah. German specialty is animal sound soundtracks. So just lots of barking and meow- meowing. Yeah. <laughs> through his entire set. So, yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, does, being a DJ changed the way you listen to music. Are you still able to enjoy it like as a fan or are you always thinking like, damn, I got to put this, this would be good in, in these moments. Or are you, is it your mind work different now? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's like one of my struggles. Cause what I play at the club is not what I listen to. Right. In the car. Yeah. And it's not that it's because it's, I'm annoyed of it. That's just not what I like to listen to. Um, I like to think that I'm a singer in my shower so I like to listen to things that I can sing along to. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 and so um staying up to the like current music and stuff, it's that's that's the hard part, you know, is like knowing what works. Cause sometimes Flo Rida, for example, I wasn't a big fan of Flo Rida till I played it and I saw how they reacted, so I had to adapt and start listening to Flo Rida to know mm. what are his songs. Uh huh. Does that make sense? Yeah. What so. are your thoughts on T Pain? Oh, here we Ooh. go. T- and, and, and Josh, answer carefully. <laughs> tread tread I will, lightly. I will, I will let you know there is a right answer. <laughs> so I feel like T-Pain doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Thank you. Thank you. Because Bravo. Bravo. he was ahead of his time. Mm-hmm. Um, T-Pain used auto-tune, and he can really sing, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you YouTube T-Pain, no auto-tune, he can sing. Kanye uses auto tune, but because Kanye has a bigger following, 
you know, either it was received really well or it was like, what is this guy doing? Yeah, that's true. And the true. people that say, what is this guy doing are the people that say, I've missed the old Kanye. Mm-hmm. And the people who are like, yo, this is dope. They're the people that like the new Kanye. But T-Pain, kudos to that man. Like he, I don't know if you've heard, um, there's a song by LMA called Boot Up. I don't remember. I don't know if I remember that song. It's it's yeah, fairly new. Okay. LMA is like an up and coming um, R and B artist. She has a song called Boot Up, and T Pain did a remix. Yeah, he did the whole song. Yeah, and if you're a T Pain fan, that's a For song sure. that you're gonna like. Is that I think on Spotify up right now? <laughs> it's dude. It's it's good. Um, yo, because we uh, we went to a concert and saw T Pain live, and fucking one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Short set. He was like twenty minutes. But we were going crazy the whole time. Yeah, and he was dancing the entire time, like straight up, not even just. Yeah, he, he, he wasn't even the headliner. Yeah, he was so good. Lupe was next, and we left. Yeah, we were like, we maxed out on our energy, like we're ready to go home now, and we love Lupe. Yep, and that was how good he was, man. It was ridiculous. And that is what an opener is supposed to do. You know, I mean, well, <laughs> let me retract that statement because you guys <laughs> left. <laughs> but I'm sure there were some people that stayed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, gang of people, yeah. But I'd rather have people, like, hyped up than, like, not pay attention to the opener yeah. and pay $12 Jack and Cokes at the bar yeah. to wait for Lupe. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the same thing with DJing. You know, when, when you're the first DJ, like, you have to know how to play to a crowd – that is shy because they don't want to dance by themselves unless they were drinking a lot before they got there. Yeah. But even then, a lot of people do pregame. Yeah. But it, it's not enough to get them on the floor. And so when when they all start dancing collectively, then you know being a DJ gets a little easier because you have that momentum going. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So like you're saying, the music you play at a club isn't necessarily something that you enjoy. However, you still have to always listen to new content to kind of at least know get the pulse of what's going on so how has sort of the newer generation of music that is popular at clubs that you may not enjoy sort of how has that impacted not just maybe your work life but like just your personal life in terms of like you have to sit down (laughs) you gotta listen to all this and you might not like it but you you really have to like wonder like is this gonna hit or not yeah um, I haven't really listened. I don't know the last song that I listened all the way through. Okay. Especially like the newer stuff. Okay. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'm, I don't want to be that guy saying that I'm against all this new music. Um, but it's tough. I mean, you know, I'm probably going to get a lot of haters, but the future and Migo stuff, like, you have to be in a certain mood for it. Oh, and for I'm sure. never in that mood. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know, I just recently made a decision to stop drinking. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. congratulations. Um, I'm not an alcoholic or anything. Let me just put that out there. Well, we are. Uh, <laughs> so I just didn't want to spend money on drinks anymore. Like, yo, it's mad expensive, you know, and, and, um, and, and the feeling I get the day after, but to go back to your question, I mean, it, it's, I, <laughs> It's tough because I really don't enjoy that music. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, so, and and you'll know like later on, like I'll be explaining how I'm actually stepping away from DJing for a living mm-hmm. and and really want to transition to what I feel like my purpose is, and which is really like being a businessman hey, hey, in hey, this hey, industry, hey, like right, using right. my DJing as a platform yeah. and help get me to where I'm at now. Okay. So I'm going to use that and propel myself. So what I feel like I, I'm really good at, which is business and relationships. Oh, there you go. You That's know? dope. So what would you say is your personal brand? At the moment, I probably say my personal brand is inspiration. Like right. oh. being able to uh, inspire Deep. others yeah. is like my brand, I feel like. And I, I feel like I just found that out. So I'm trying to do whatever I can. However way I can to live that brand. Hey, man. So much respect to that. Especially since you're the youngest one at the table so far right now. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm 26. I know. Um, so uh, it's, it's kind of tough um, because there's people my age and people who are younger than me um, 
doing other things in life. And obviously, I'm Filipino. My my parents aren't really on board 100% um, because it's not in the Filipino book of how to become successful. Yeah. Um, but it makes me hungrier, um, thirstier to to want to just really, really push out my brand of inspiring, you know? Yeah, that, that's definitely was literally the only question I had was like <laughs> what we're doing now in, in a stereotypical Asian. Are you first generation? Um, No. Um, Wait, what does that mean? One more time. Where, Before where, where I were you, answer. Where were you born? I was born here. Were your were parents, parents also born here? No. Okay. So that makes you first generation. You're first okay. generation uh, right Asian American. Yes. And a lot of our friend, our peer group are generally first or second generation Asian American. And what that basically entails for those who are not are that our parents have Eastern cultures and we're in a Western world. Now, there's a conflict between that. And that conflict is what Josh just kind of touched up on is in the Eastern culture, it's very much do it by the book. Here is the prescribed method because the people before you have taken this road. We paved the road for you, so you have to take this road. The Western world is here's all the roads you can take. Pick the one you want. And then if you're not good enough, tough, pick something else, right? But there's a there's a discrepancy there. And I was very much interested in just sort of how your your world is in that in that sense because in high school it was very conflicting. I had a real tough two years with my parents. Probably from sophomore year to senior year, I would combat my parents a lot. We'd get in a lot of fights. I'd come home late on purpose. Like I wouldn't even be doing shit. I'd just hang out at the in and out. <laughs> and I like come home at twelve thirty. Place. I mean, I, I don't blame. You. I would. Yeah, but like I still do to this day. <laughs> it, it's it was it was all to send a message where I was just saying like I you know I'm not discrediting what they did, but I don't want them to control what I want to do in my life. I want to be able to say I want to be able to make mistakes and things like that. And those two years were tough, but after those two years, my parents kind of like been okay with it at worst, which is a win for if you're Asian <laughs> to like supportive to, at certain times in my life, you know, and now to this day, now we're good. Like, it's all good. They know that no matter what they prescribe, I'm going to just do what I do, you know, so they yeah, don't stay at the end of now. Yeah. So they're, they're okay with that, but can it, I pick you up? Can I pick yeah, you back off of that? For sure. That is 150% true. And I feel the thing that is not being recognized is so now that I know that I'm a first generation, um, my parents sacrificed so much when they immigrated here, right? That they wanted to give me the opportunities that they never got. Yeah. But the one thing that's forgotten is that this this Western style, th- Western world style of thinking will happen, and it's not. It doesn't. They didn't think about the fact that we're going to have different opportunities to be successful. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and, and it's really what you define as success. Yeah. If we're going to define success as how much money is in my bank account, um, and if we compare, I'm probably going to be unsuccessful. Right? Yeah. Yep. But my version of success is quite simple. I want to start a family, and I just want freedom i have three core values that i align with the decisions i make yeah so it's it's god love and freedom above all things is god like i'm christian so i got deeper with my faith just very recently and i'm still in that process but i grew up in the church so my parents brought me to church every sunday bible study every saturday but it started becoming habitual like a chore and it wasn't until I I decided to leave my job and I lost everything, you know, like I, I was in a relationship at that time and then that that passed on. And it wasn't until I was kind of like broken and I realized, man, my bills aren't going to stop, but God blessed me with abundance and I never had to worry about where I'm going to get my car payment. I never had to worry about how I'm going to pay my credit card bill. It came. So seeing was believing for me. So that's why I decided to deepen my faith. That's why my company is not 
I, I like to say it's my company, but more of my platform because that's my platform to, to give reverence back to God. Mm. Right. Um, and then love, like I want to, you know, like I don't want to be single for the rest of my life. Like I, I want to settle down, get married, have kids. And three, like I want freedom. I want to be able to buy whatever I want on top of providing the things that I need to survive, you know, and I want time to spend with my family on the weekends, which is why going back to what I said before, I'm starting to step away from the nightlife because that took me away from that. Yeah. yeah. So whatever decision I do, just like when you asked me to be on the podcast, this is an opportunity for me to share my story and share how I think which aligns with the three core values that I set for myself. So it's an easy call, right? If your podcast represented something that didn't align with my core values, I probably wouldn't have entertained it or would have rejected or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, and it's still a constant battle with my parents, you know? And, and I try to explain to them, you know, like you've done so much for me. It's like, they've gotten lost that I got blessed with different opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to piggyback off that because what you said was just 150% true. Yeah. I mean, you know, like you said there, when you grow up in the Eastern world, especially at the time our parents grew up, there wasn't as many opportunities. There was to make it vague business science and like, teachers and ser public service and things like that so in that realm there was a clear hierarchy in terms of the money you can make was in medical or business and when they come here they think that that's the also the path to the american dream and what happens is we grow up and we make friends with people who are who've been here for many generations and we realize shit you can do you can be in art you can be in music you can make well, now you can make videos, you could do whatever you want. There's a way to make money regardless of what you choose to do. <clears throat> and for a, for those couple of years, it was really tough for my parents to understand that because it's so hard to retrain your mind if you spent decades just like, this is the only way, you know. And it wasn't until, you know, unfortunately things happened to my parents that they realized that this is a different world and and you know it, they we've come around everything's all good no one worry about my parents are fine but you know unfortunately sometimes it, it takes that resistance for everybody that's involved to understand like i'm sure that if you didn't necessarily combat and you kind of went along with it you may not fully understand and appreciate what it took for them to get here and also at the end of all this, when it's all said and done and you achieve what you are set out to achieve, your parents will then see, like you said, seeing is believing. They'll say, oh, there is this way that is possible. And then the beauty of it is our parents came here to make a better world for their family. And what we're doing is is the realization of that dream. They just see it and qualify it in money. But we're living it day in and day out. And then our progeny, SAT word, y'all our progeny is going to even live it exponentially better you know so it it's challenging it's definitely tough um but i almost feel like it's almost necessary you got to kind of have that resistance and break through before anything really happens you know yeah no that's that's deep and um sometimes you got to really hit bottom yeah before you can hit the top yeah you know what i'm saying um, for sure I like to think of myself as someone that likes to see uh, or doesn't like to see, but I'll see other people's experiences and I'd want to learn from it before I have uh, to experience yes, it yourself. Exactly. Yeah. That's cool, you man. Know? Um, so I know you're trying to get out of the game in terms of the nightlife. So, but uh, while you're technically, I guess, kind of in it or still in it, in a sense, in a sense, DJing wise, I guess. Let's uh, let's get some nice juicy stories out of you <laughs> about some experiences you might have had. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll start things off light. What are some as a DJ? What are some club going do's and don'ts in terms of interacting with a DJ at a club? Oh man, um, first thing, don't crowd me. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I see you. Like, let me do my thing first and get a song 
at its beginning point so I have time to kind of converse with you and we'll we'll talk if you have a request like I'll see like if it's a good request and maybe it makes sense why not you know what I'm saying but I'm not gonna you know play Bon Jovi at 12 30 midnight you know what I'm saying I, well, I, I've well, been guilty of that well, well <laughs> depends on where you are right <laughs> I guess it depends, depends on, on the are. crowd yeah well it depends on the which Bon Jovi song uh, too. Yes, yes, yeah. sure. um I've done that before. Not Bon Jovi specifically, but I've gone to a DJ like, yo, like, play Creed. Yeah, to- <laughs> <laughs> like totally drunk and just like, hey, can you play a song? And then they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they never play. It's but. really alcohol. Like it gives sure. you that liquid courage, right? Yeah. Um, some club dues. I mean, I've had a guy give me twenty bucks to play Mariah Carey. E- e- easy call. You know what I mean? Like, I, you're tipping me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If if the club owner asked me to not play something, the person that's gonna pay me at the end of the night, like you gotta respect that person's position. Yeah. So to sound cliche, like money talks. You know what I mean? Um What Mariah Carey song was it? He just wanted any Mariah Carey song. Oh, huh. So I just typed in Mariah Carey on my computer and I just <laughs> exactly. I Respect. And and re- like a couple months ago, I was at this uh place, Bar Louie and Downey. Yeah. Uh it's I'd like to call it like a BJ's 2.0 because the kitchen's open late, but they just have a DJ oh. on Friday nights and Saturday mm-hmm. nights. Okay. Um, so some guy went up to me, gave me 20 bucks, and was like, can you play Prince? I played three Prince songs back to back. Like I stopped. <laughs> I, I was playing just some random song, and I stopped it midway to play Prince. Oh, there you go. You know, like, because Prince is dope. Yeah. You know hell what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And um, I played three Prince songs back to back. And he gave me this look, and I there's a feeling you get, right? He gave me that look, and I know if you're listening, you can't see my face, but if you watch, you know the videos that these guys are gonna be putting up. My face was just like, yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> like I felt pride, like that's right. A 26 year old played three Prince songs back to back. Yeah, maybe they were the most mainstream songs, but I did it anyways. You know what I mean? That's an expensive ass jukebox yeah. right there, man. Um, and then I think another club don't is don't threaten me. Um, <laughs> I think I think that's a that's like a, a life a, don't. A, a life, life don't, don't. <laughs> a general a general life don't. You know, like I don't want to put anyone out on blast, but I did an event, and let me just start by saying I I have family that's in you know the military, so I did something for the army, uh, maybe like four years ago. And this soldier was really drunk and didn't like that I was playing a song, although the dance floor was full. Yeah. Okay. He came up to me and was like, man, what the F are you playing? Like, do you see us right now? And in my head, I was like, yeah. do you see yeah. I do, I do them see it. right now? Like, am I just, you know? And I was like, I kept just throwing it off, but. It never let like it ruined my night. Oh damn, nah, man! Um, another one, and these are private events. Okay, this is not even at the club. Yeah. Um, I, I did a fiftieth birthday party. The wife surprised the husband with a casino night. Um, and I to- I told her this so many times. I even have it on text. If I had still had my old phone, I said, "Just want to let you know, I'm not big on '80s music because she requested that, and she said, "Well, we've heard you before. We we love the way you DJ. Please, please, please." So I was like, all right, cool. The guy comes. I don't think it was the husband, but one of their guests came up to me drunk again and was like, do you see the people out here? We're not your age. Play music from our age. And I was like, I I had to think about it and was like, should I just pack up and leave? Oh, For damn. how rude this guy was. Like, yeah. you know, I couldn't say anything back to him because I was representing my, my brand. Yeah. Right. But I was like, do you have no, like, morals? Like, why yeah. would you – do I come to your guys' job and tell you how to do your job? I know, right? Well, I mean, sometimes, sometimes I wish you would. <laughs> might, might help me out a little bit. Well, you did say something about <laughs> loins earlier, so <laughs> you're getting me there. <laughs> but I, I, I would say, you know, those – and I know those were more private events, but, I mean – Alcohol has such a big influence yeah. in what people do and don't do, but you really have to learn how to just play. Like, if I'm sober, it's really annoying. But if I had some drinks in me, maybe I get a kick out of it. You right. know what I'm saying? So it's really just perspective. But 
I mean, I think those are the big ones. You know, I don't think there's any uh, any hidden ones. I mean, you must really be a fool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you have any like crazy stories while you were DJing? Maybe you saw something or something happened to you? Yeah, I got a girl topless. Oh, um, damn. I, what? Wish, I wish that ended with I got a girl pregnant. No. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so believe it or not, like there's that stereotypical DJ like, man, this guy does drugs, drinks, and goes home with women every yeah, night. Yeah. Um, I Where is that? I did not, you know, like. <laughs> I didn't get the memo, dude. <laughs> there's only one person that comes home with me, and his name is Jack in the Box. Because <laughs> that's the only thing, you know. I walk back to my car by myself. I I get a munchie meal and I head home and I eat my briefs. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, like there's no. <laughs> that's, I'm just laughing thinking about it because how'd you get to go topless? Like, can you tell me? Okay, what was the first step? <laughs> He's taking notes. So yeah, 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 yeah. I had no intention of doing such. We never thing. have intention. Um, it's just. But I I don't know. Everyone was just having a good time, and I look. And there she is standing on top of a bench because for the bottle service area of that club, there was a bench. One bench. <laughs> yeah, so you'll need a bench. Um, you need bottle I, service. You know what? I think oh, she was drinking bottle. vodka and uh, they sold a lot of Ciroc. Classic. So Ciroc. Ciroc. Okay. I don't know if flavor matters, but uh, maybe. It's probably a peach. The fruitier, mm-hmm. the better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Fruity I'm going to assume. Okay. Um, next thing you know, boing. You know, like <laughs> she, there she was, you know, and. and and then it feels like it was long, but then they they took her down quick. What uh what song was playing? I wouldn't be able to remember, man. It was definitely a hip hop song, one like hip hop. You know, <laughs> it, it, one hip hop. Was she it. hot? You know, it's hard to tell because the lights. Uh, you know, it's dark. Um, yeah, she was. You know, and and, <laughs> and I, you know, I I'm. And from where I was and where she was, we were still a good distance. Yeah. Mm. So, like, I couldn't even tell you if they were, like, the National Geographic style areolas oh. or if they were the bumpy braille areolas. Oh, those them <laughs> Stevie you, Wonders. If you, <laughs> good. You know, if you watch four-year-old version, you'd know, you know, but. Dude said National Geographic areolas, though. I can't take credit. I got That's that from classic, the movie. Though. I wanted to use it at least once. Oh, well. Oh, there we got go. it in. God. With the boys, man. With the boys. That's so good. <laughs> um, uh, oh, go, 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 go. The, uh, no, I was just going to say uh, a fight broke out at the end of the night. But mm. the reason why it's crazy is because I was playing a Bryson Tiller song, which is very like slow, yeah, in your feels type thing. And I think they took it too <laughs> serious. <laughs> they and, brought it way and he down was in just the field. Like, why are you looking at me that way? Yeah. No, why are you? And then punches and... You know, I can understand if the club was like really full, but it wasn't that full and it was such a slow song. I must have touched something inside of them that yeah. got them like upset. <laughs> um, so that's why I'm putting that in my list. Okay. Um, and then last week, um, someone broke her wrist. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it happened, but, uh, you know, my buddy Clutch and I came to the conclusion that she was wearing heels. And she's not a normal heel wearing uh, type of gal. Yeah, yeah. And then she must have. Not, that part must have blacked out and then boom, like swollen wrist. Damn. The, um, the bone was like protruding. Mm. Um, Ugh, that hurt right now. Yeah. Fuck. So I don't know <laughs> if that means job well done as a DJ because you she was dancing so much. Or I maybe the bartender well was like, yeah, that was my drink yeah. that got her. You know, Yeah, yeah you know that was saying? my roofie that I put in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, that... There's the broken wrist, I guess. <laughs> uh, Josh, you're, you're you're from the three, right? The three, the three one zero. The three one zero. Oh yes, is that that is my area code. Carson, the three, born and raised. Uh, and so we we all have, and we all kind of the circle of friends that that we have. There are some other people that that I know who chose this path as well of being uh, an entertainer, an artist, specifically a DJ. And uh, I just want to, because you're in the business and Carson and Torrance and Gardena, the, the, the three itself without the greater L.A. is a pretty small area. If you think about it, yeah. it's just saturated with a lot of people. Um, has there a, what's one? What's the competition like Two, Is there would you even consider it a competition or three? Everyone kind of just stays in their own lane. No one steps on each other's toes. 
Uh, because I, I have to admit, I, I know some of the dudes in Carson and Torrance, and I know it doesn't necessarily happen like that sometimes. Uh, that question I'm going to have to answer based like individually and myself only, right? Of course, of course. Because to me, I don't believe it's competition. And I, I, I had to learn that because at first I thought, I was like, man, they're doing these clubs. Like, I want to do that. That's not fair. Like, I'm, I think I, I, I could totally do it, you know? But growing up, and again, being a Sioux in the game, like we all got to stick together, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 um, and using this term cliche again, like culture, you know what I'm saying? And, um, to me, I don't believe, uh, I don't believe that it's competition. I believe there's so much more to go. There's different paths that you can take to be a DJ, right? You could be on the radio. Um, you could be private events. You could be a club DJ being known all over LA, OC, doing your thing. Uh, it's really the the route you want to take. And then it's perspective. Yeah. So I could be like thinking about all these other Carson DJs and being like, nah, man, I'm better than these guys. Or, or I could be like, man, they're better than me. Like, how do I? But to me, it's like they do their thing. I do my thing. You know what I mean? And, and, um, I, you know, just you just gotta give respect where it's due. Mm. Uh and I'll shout one dude out, Gabe C. Hey. I saw him I saw him this weekend. Uh he's working for Power 106. So we did something for Power 106 for the Jay Z Beyonce concert. Seeing him was really dope because it was kind of like the circle of life. Not a lot of people know this, but um I went to the gym <laughs> and um I <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not a lot of people know. Like I do <laughs> go to the gym. Um but I, I was at the twenty four hour fitness in Carson and I saw Gabe C. Um, and he was telling me that he was a DJ and I was like, Hey, that's dope, bro. Like, what do you use? How did you like really picking his brain about it? You know? And and Gabe C is one of the guys that was just like, kind of like sharing that advice. Like he didn't gain anything from it besides a talking buddy at the gym and the sauna shirtless. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was shirtless. He was double. Mm. (laughs) So he, he got a good view of this, you know what I'm saying? Um, but the fact that, um, he was just giving that knowledge out. Like that, I'm grateful for that because that's that's worth more than any like price, right? Yeah. Um, and Ga- and seeing Gabe this weekend was like these two dudes from Carson, who were just kind of like doing little parties here and there, and me just starting, and then now providing the stage and the sound and the turntables for him to DJ at the Jay Z and Beyonce concert. Like that that was such a dope feeling. And when you were telling, when you were asking the question. Like, that's the first thing I thought of, because mm. if I viewed Gabe as competition, and I mean that, like, if I had some negative feelings, like, that competition comes from, man, like, the, I would have never got that feeling, and I could have, and, and you waste energy, mm. like, man, you're DJing for Power 106, you're DJing for Shade 45, like, but now I'm like, yo, that's so dope, you're on Shade 45, yeah. bro, like, you're on Power 106, like, that's dope because I'm doing my hustle because there's more than enough to go around. Exactly. Right? Like, I gave him the tools to DJ and he DJed and we both got money. Like, mm. how else could you want to win? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I never understood the the idea of like, well, I mean, I understand it, but I just don't agree with it, I guess. Just the idea of like, in order for you to win, somebody's got to lose. Sure. I mean, there's going to be those instances, but that that... I don't think that that should be the mindset. Like I, when people that I know achieve stuff that is like beyond whatever I can imagine, it's like I have a genuine sense of happiness for them, and there isn't any like should have been me. He doesn't. He or she doesn't deserve it. It's none of that. It's just like that's dope. You got what you work for. Now, for me, the competition part is more like now what can I do to get there? It isn't necessarily like fuck that guy. I'm going to try to beat him. It's mm-hmm. like he's running ahead. I it's on me to catch up. You know what I mean? It's like a it's a game of competition in the sense of like if somebody ups the bar, it everybody else just kind of got to come up mm-hmm. and we rise. That's how you rise together, so to speak, you know. So, can I flip that and twist it a little bit? Okay. Because there's something that there's something that's been on my mind and I didn't really want to I didn't know how to put it out there without calling people out. Ooh. So, when you talk about competition right now, I was telling you how, and, and you were just talking about how we view it and, you know, nobody has to lose. Everyone can win. Yeah. 
what if you had someone that was, you know, quote unquote, humble bragging, mm. right? And it comes off like, dude, or do that, whatever, like, you're too much, like, chill, like, we get it. Yeah. When does that, like, because I've had, like, I'm human, bro, like, so I've had the feelings of seeing other DJs kind of, you know, quote unquote, humble brag. And I use quotes because, like, are you trying to be humble or are you trying to brag, but you don't want to be a dick because you're really being a dick? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, mm. you know, that's when I start getting technical. Like, I've heard you DJ. Don't, you know, like, you know. I don't, I don't, uh, I've, I've been around a lot of people who, who've done that. I, I don't necessarily bat an eye to it just because uh, I feel like what they're doing is filling a void which is uh, which is created by insecurity, right? And so they they need that validation, they need that attestation of hey, maybe, and they're already they've they've so they've thought it so far through already that to them what they're trying to they still want to get it out, but not make it sound again, make it not sound pretentious or like uh, I'm bragging. So that's when I look at it. I look at it as okay, he's he's fishing a little bit, you know, for for attention. Um, maybe I give it to him a little bit, uh, but if he keeps, if he continues to do it, then I, I wouldn't even say anything. But I, what I say is, look, man, if that's what, if that's what you need to sleep at night. If you need, if you need me or anyone else to say good job to one, do something that you're supposed to be doing, or, I mean, if, if it's an accomplishment, if it's a great accomplishment, then I'll, yeah, of course I'm going to, I'm going to give mad props. Um, but, but I feel like a part of it, maybe not all of it, uh, a part of it is just them feeling like. Well, look, the, the, I'm I'm trying my hardest right now, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock anybody on that. Uh, but it's just it's it's a piece it's a little piece of a little bit of insecurity I think, because they just for some reason or another what they're doing and the effort that they're putting forth, for some reason doesn't translate to success or happiness in their life. I I can say that, you know, I have a very short uh, patience. Fact. I am not. I'm very. I'm the least <laughs> patient of all the boys here, for sure easily and early on in my life early 20s even mid 20s i would probably say that that would really get me upset and i would want to like not not destroy him with my words but i would want to either beat him competitively or revel in in this example the person's misery so if they fail i'm like that's what you get it's a little different now it's tough because i'm not one to like, I don't like thinking that way. Like, yeah. thinking about, like, bro, you're such a dick. Like, stop. And then start critiquing every little thing they do. Mm. But sometimes I just want to say, like, and I don't even need to tag them or say their name. But it's just, like, we don't need to know what you're doing. Like, you can move in peace and silence. Yeah. And mm -hmm. still win. Yeah. But I love what you said about the whole insecurity thing because that could be the case. I mean, Hey, I suffer from insecurities too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't easy growing up blind in my left eye, but am I, was I going to let that like dictate what the type of person I was? Yes, because I chose to be a person to make fun of myself and to be mm. cool and accept it than have to like I don't know, sink to those lows of, you know, quote unquote humble bragging. Mm. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. yeah. I, that's why I wanted to flip it because I see a lot of that and um, it works because they're getting more, they're getting more, they're getting more shows. They're getting more looks, but you know, that's the path that they chose as a DJ. Yeah. I, I think as I've gotten older, it's definitely become more of a couple things. One, I think at the end of the day, truth always wins that if they're, if they're, bragging beyond their means there's going to be a point where it gets they get caught up it's just a fact it's going to happen it may not be for a month a year or several years but eventually it'll happen two if i truly care about this person i'm i'm going to be really honest with them i'm going to let them know hey listen i'm saying this because i care but what you're doing is is destructive not in the sense of like they're going to destroy their life but it's not going to help you and Three, um, you know, if, if a lot of times I'm not, I, I'm just projecting here, but a lot of times when people humble brag, it's not necessarily who they are. 
they're trying to portray a, a particular caricature about themselves. And that also you get caught up. Like if I stay true to who I am in every scenario, I'm never worried about like someone catching me off guard because it's just going to be me the whole time. Whereas if somebody is trying to humble brag, there's a switch. They got to flip in different scenarios. And sometimes they flip the switch at the wrong time or don't turn it on at the wrong time. They're caught up. Mm-hmm. And that's how they got caught up too. So with all that kind of combined and me being a little older and hopefully at least a tad more patient, I would say that for me, I'm, I'm very much like, okay, like you do what you got to do. I'm not going to pay attention. Wish you nothing but the best. Or if I care about the person, I'm going to call them out. But after that, it's like, listen, I, I found like a lot of people just experience and really truly learn lessons best when they go through it themselves you can tell somebody advice all they want and they're gonna be like yeah you might be all raw raw but it's like a 48 hour like inspired inspired period and afterwards they go back to what they were they have to go through the things themselves um in general to really truly understand lessons and meanings and things like that so yeah i mean coming from a guy who wanted to to put people down to now just sort of being like yeah let it let the process happen. Yeah. Things will yeah. things will work out the way it should, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, I think Lil Wayne said it best in an interview with Diane Sawyer. Diane Sawyer had done said something about to Lil Wayne, and Lil Wayne said, "Diane, Diane, <laughs> Diane," because <laughs> <laughs> that's what Lil Wayne sounds like, right? Yeah. Uh, no, Lil Wayne said, huh. uh, "Look, uh, you worry about you. Let them worry about theirs, because I got mine." Uh, and he said that whatever happened seven years ago, and I I run with that in, in my mind. Uh, yeah, I try not to. Uh, again, if it doesn't, if I'm not harmed by it, physically, mentally, or anything, then by all means, go ahead. They're not stepping on me to get above. Uh, it's just when I look at, it, I, just, I I say, well, I know what you're worth. I, I know what you're doing and what you're capable of. But and this is not what you should be doing. But hey, you know, it's uh, you can only guide somebody. A certain way lead them to the river it's up to them to fish kind of thing you know what i mean if they don't want to do it and they want to keep throwing dirt then go ahead yeah you know, totally that means um so for anybody that is interested in looking into the nightlife industry as a dj maybe they're just getting started they want to start the early in the game as somebody who's been experienced in that field what are some advice that you might have to those that are kind of getting started honestly just go to different clubs and bars and listen to what djs are doing and then ask yourself like what type of dj do you want to be right um and i mean that in a very general sense like do you want to be a a latin music playing dj um, because there's a huge industry right now for that. Mm-hmm. Do you want to be um, like a hip hop DJ? Do you want to be an EDM DJ, or do you want to be like an open format DJ? Which I feel like that's where I kind of come in because I can kind of, I feel like I could play all the genres. Um, and once you kind of determine that, then it's really like figure out the tools that you need, right? Like, are you know, do you need to get turntables and stuff, or do you do you need to? Just get a, a little controller. Like, what what can help you get started? Yeah. And um, just practice. It's really practice because if you can do it a hundred times in your bedroom, pause, you can do it, you know, <laughs> you could do it at the bars. And oh, you can facts. Do it yeah, you could really do it at the bars. Oh, yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you can get a girl topless, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, that's- so... Um, I know you're transitioning out out of the nightlife, right? So what platforms can we start seeing you in? So um, I'm removing myself from the nightlife DJ-wise. So I don't have to be there every Friday night, every Saturday night trying to work. I'm trying to let – I'm trying to work smarter. So um, I started my own events company, and it's called Higher Ground Events Co. Um, and really what we do is we're we're producing events – from weddings to birthdays, uh, we have some corporate clients, right? We do Federal Bar on Saturdays, Soul mm. Saturdays. We have uh, right there in Long Beach, Bobo's Kitchen and Rooftop, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he we loves got, Bobo's. Yeah, Bobo's is dope. I'm going to be there this Friday. so because well, because uh, uh, Money Mike was used to spin over there, so that's why there we, we, go. we always get the plug. Money Mike? Yeah, Cordetta. 
Yeah, Mike E. Yeah, Mike E. Oh, yeah, that's e. my guy. Yeah, that's our, we we grew up playing golf together. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we yeah, got yeah. some golfers hey, here. Hey, shout out to Gabe. Shout out to Cordetta brother. Hey, shout out to Zeb. What's up, dog? And uh, the whole De Los Santos family. You guys dope. Yeah, no, nah, they're they're dope. Um, uh, Mike E. For sure. Mike like, e. Mike, Mike is a great example. Um, Mike, I know you're listening. Mike is a great example because um, he does it all. Like, and he doesn't need to post uh, every little single like win that he has. But knowing Mike, I know he's winning. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, he he was in the nightlife industry. He still sort of is when he wants to be. But he has his ways of surviving. You know, and so that's that's kind of like what I base it off. So the platforms that that you know I'm trying to really focus on with Instagram uh, and Facebook, like it's tough. But, um, you know, transitioning out of the nightlife, just really, you know, taking taking what I've known and what I've learned yeah. and using it to, to help not just me, but everyone else. Because I'll be able to assign DJs now to play at these places and they're going to get paid. I'm going to get paid. You know, everyone wins and mm. I, I get what I want, which is time with my family. Yeah. Chilling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But some people like to DJ all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and that's dope. Like that's that's them, and that's their hustle. So, um, I hope that answered your question. Um. So on top of that, what else are you starting up uh, this week? So, um, my boy Justin is here. Uh, we're filming a vlog. I know. Uh, hey, so shout the out vlog, Justin. Yeah, man. Justin in the building. Uh, he, uh, we're filming a vlog, and um, my goal for the vlog is to inspire. And just kind of show that if a 26-year-old from Carson who almost didn't pass the seventh grade and barely passed high school um, and had to, you know, resort to a private college to get his degree, you know, can can do this. You know, anybody else can. Um, uh, here's a little, you know, uh, world premiere. I haven't really told anyone. It hasn't been public. Uh-oh. But might as well do it here with the boys. Oh, we're breaking, we're breaking news right I now. I know, man. World I mean, premiere. It's good times with the boys, and now there's going to be breaking news with the boys. Oh, with the boys. <laughs> um, you know, my company's merging. Um, we're merging with a uh, another company who I use normally. I subcontract with. Um, their company is called Sound Illumination. Um, and so... Being so, my company officially started in January 2018. I know. Mm-hmm. So we're in September. That's nine months, and it's like I'm having a baby because now I'm merging my company. I never thought that my company would merge. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. right? Like I just wanted my company to be successful, but here I am, like doing the steps to merge my company. Yeah. Um. So this week, like you know, I'm heading to Temecula to get some to get some stuff and, and do some business for the company. Like a lot of behind the scenes thing behind the scenes things that no one really sees, you know, cause they just see my, re- the result. Yeah. Like, Oh dope. You did the Jay-Z Beyonce concert. Mm. Oh dope. You, you guys put DJs at Bobo's and all that good stuff. You know what I mean? Like, but they don't know the work that I got to put in the meetings and the cold calls and the rejections that I got to hit. Yeah. And still, I'm still hitting, you know what I mean? I'm not even 5% close to my goal. I'm like 1.5, but, uh, I'm thinking of my of calling my vlog uh, always moving forward. Ooh, because yeah. you got to always yeah. move forward, no matter how big or small your step is. Like yeah. you just got to keep moving forward. Yeah. Um, and um, just so many things like that happening. Um, I was just telling Andrew, you know, before we got on, was I didn't know today was Monday. I honestly thought it was Wednesday or Thursday. It wasn't until someone was like, dude, like you set a meeting for next Monday. That's next week. And I had to look at my phone and be like, oh, dang, like that's true. So I called the person back like, hey, can we just meet this week? Because I, I got confused. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, honestly, up. like I, I got confused. Yeah. Um, my Monday, your Thursday. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Um, so, you know, that's that's dope. And, and losing track of my days might sound bad. Like, bro, you're overworked or you're you're whatever, but honestly, I'm the happiest I've ever been. That's what's up. Dude. Like you're engrossed in the passion. Like, let's really talk quality of life. Yeah. Right? right? Like, 
I came from a health, I have my bachelor's in healthcare administration. I was working a job where my, 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 uh, income was, was okay in this world. And I had benefits, you know, but was I really happy? No, like I wasn't, I couldn't be behind a desk for eight hours. So I voluntarily left my job and I took a leap of faith. And when I took that leap of faith, I didn't take that leap of faith saying, I'm going to start a company. I had, I said I was going to do this and I was going to do that. And it all brought me here to where I'm at now and where I'm at now. Like, cause that was literally a year ago. Yeah. And where I'm at now is my company is going to merge. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Uh, I got a new ride. Like hey. after I, Skirt. after I left my job yeah, and it was the car that I wanted. Like I wanted this package and this color and all that stuff. So that was a big win for me. Yeah. And then not only that, but I, like God was removing people out of my life and adding people to my life. And there were, f- there, there's friends who are family now. And there were people who I thought were friends who are no longer in my circle. So it's just crazy seeing, um, all this change. And I know I'm probably like jumping a little bit, but like I eat, breathe, sleep this stuff. This is all I ever talk about. Yeah. How I met Justin because Justin works at Green Door in Carson. I'm always there working. Mm. And it got to the point where he was like, bro, like, what do you do? I, you know, <laughs> bro, you're always here. <laughs> yeah. He's like, how do you make money, bro? Like, our drinks are expensive here. What, what are you doing? We even give you a Yelp discount. What are you doing? Um, and after explaining, he's just like, bro, can I intern for you? Yeah. And I'm like, dude. Why don't I pay it forward? I was lucky to have mentors who paid it forward for me. Yeah. Let me do the same. And um, like seeing all that full circle in in like a year, I'm cr- I'm like overwhelmed. Like I can't. It's crazy. And um, that's why I want to continue like staying grounded, staying grateful. Like all of this can go away just like that. You totally. know what I mean? The fact that I'm here with you guys right now, you guys seen something in me andrew you know whatever and that's crazy because i didn't do the things i did so so i can be like andrew do you notice do you Mm -hmm. know what i'm doing right right right. can you ask me to be on your podcast you know what i mean yeah so to me like it's such a humbling experience and that's why i'm doing the vlog and i'm doing what i'm doing to to really just inspire people bro like Mm. And using this, your guys' platform, and trying to use this platform to do that and, like, strengthen my voice and make my voice louder, like, why not? You know do what it, I mean? man. Uh, to be honest, I, I think we should probably th- be thanking you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? For real. <laughs> I was just listening to that, and I was like, damn, we ain't done shit yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you see, like, every sometimes people are just not in that moment yet because... They're busy doing other things. Yeah. Like when I was working full time, I didn't really know what I wanted, but I thought I had it though. Yep. It wasn't until like I lost it to realize like, all right, what do I really want? Yeah. You know what I mean? And and it's, it's really up to you. Like my successes that I consider successes may not be successes to you. Right. Right. It's really based off the individual. I mean, I would think a success would be, the fact that your parents are cool with what you're doing now because they, they've they seen you for how many plus years mm. that you're like, you'll be fine, you know? Yeah. And that's got to be a huge win. For sure. Others may not see that as a win because maybe they grew up in that Western world of thinking and their parents grew up in that Western world of thinking. So it doesn't hit home for them, yeah. right? But like there's others that can relate to that success. Yeah, for sure. And like, yo, I can't wait for that day. Or like, oh, I remember that day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's really individualized, man. I mean, um, I really think everyone, everyone got, everyone has their own thing, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what's up. Um, to, to wrap things up here, uh, I reached out to your cousin Lawrence, me and law, we go way back. He's like a little brother to me, man. I used to have to, uh, pick him up for basketball practice when it was a shit fucking like 6 30 in the morning Mm -hmm. pick him up rebels yeah take him take him to practice so 
uh, he's definitely family to me. So I asked him to write a little something about you, and I wanted to surprise you at the end here. Oh, man. Tied oh. in together. So get get the tissues ready. <clears throat> so Lauren says, Josh is one of the most caring and generous people I know. Also one of the funniest guys I know. True. Mm-hmm. His ability to connect with people and make them laugh through his humor is probably a thing I admire about him and one of his biggest strengths. He's driven, goal-oriented, and motivated but most of all, he's humble and thankful for everything he has. Now, I want to preface this by saying he wrote this while in Vegas, so that's actually very good. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, if, that life is beautiful. If I was in Vegas, it would have like. <laughs> you know, that's funny you say that because that's how Lawrence talks when he's drunk. And that's our thing. So his his birthday is the 29th, and every time we joke, we're just like. Hey, are you drunk? Is you, is you drunk? Is I drunk? So he, he probably he's probably the one that calls you Jikas. Yeah. <laughs> and and Lawrence was the one that says that he gave me that name. Oh, really? But I'm not gonna say that he didn't or he did. Like I'm just gonna leave it up for for discussion. Like whatever. <laughs> if you believe he did, then yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. If other people believe that it was at my friend Joy's house and it was at her house, but yeah, I mean, uh, Lawrence. And I grew up together, and uh, he's like my big brother. Yeah. And uh, crazy, you know, how life is because we we used to fight all the time when I used to spend, you know, summer days at his house. And I'd take his scooter and be like, man, I'm leaving. And I'd like scooter all the way to the McDonald's. <laughs> but then I'd come back. Yeah. And you know why we were fighting? It was because like he beat me in Halo. Oh, or yeah, like, yeah. you know, there was just like stupid disagreements. And then we got older, and then we, we had to – we related so much. Yeah. And then there was a point where I feel like we we didn't really agree on a lot of things and it and it was new to me at least because it was like the dude that always was there with me and we can't really agree it's kind of weird but then you know I don't know it just we grew in and we matured and we got wiser yeah. and we understood that yo that's his opinion that's my opinion but at the end of the day like you're my bro so yeah, it's all love yes and I, and I think that was maybe on me. Like I had to grow more mature and more wiser to to know that like I don't always have to agree with him. Yeah. But yeah, that's my dude. Like I can't believe he he wrote that. I you know, know Lawrence. I owe a lot to Lawrence. Like I, the name always moving forward, Lawrence. Oh. The name higher ground, Lawrence. Mm. Right. Um. Just me like starting the company and really, um, being the cement to take that leap of faith. Yeah. Lawrence like he's been telling me to do this right and so he's he's like the root of everything and so um I owe a lot to him so shout out to Lawrence that's my bro I'll see you this Saturday man (laughs) uh so for all the listeners Josh where where can they find you on social media uh you could find me on Instagram uh DJ underscore Jcast um follow my company too, higher ground event co uh Facebook it's just facebook.com slash DJ Jcast. That's two J's. Just <laughs> have to say that again. No, that's, that's what's up. Um, yeah, yeah, if yeah. you want to add my personal Facebook, you can. It's just Josh Castillo. Um, and I'm, I'm very transparent. Like, I know what to put out there and what to keep private. Yeah. But, um, like, I feel like where I, the position I'm in, you know, kind of like what you said about flipping a switch. Like, if you think I'm just fronting for this podcast – Catch me some somewhere, and this is exactly what you're gonna get. That's the best way to live, man. Minus Organic. the pizza breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wrap things up, fellas. Any yep, last yep. words here? We appreciate you coming on, giving us the time of day. We know you're a busy man, and so <laughs> always have you on again. Yeah, yeah definitely you're, open you're, invitation anytime you want to come back. Thank please you so do. much. And uh, I, I, I didn't know you. Uh, met you an hour ago and uh bro i'm sold man you know what i'm saying like i'll take two dude yeah you make me you make me a believer bro um i wish you the best in everything that you do thank you uh I'll, again thank you for for coming on to the podcast uh a, a repeater for sure yeah for yeah. sure I'm looking forward to your youtube channel and yes all the videos. Uh, i don't really have a platform for it yet besides igtv 
Um, but you know, if you just follow me on those platforms, Ooh. I'm going to be putting that out there. Yeah. You got a lot done in nine months. So the next nine months is going to be even more, man. Yeah, man so it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm just grateful, man. I'm, I'm, like, I'm going to put that, I'm going to put this, uh, you know, out in the, uh, the universe of fear. Uh, you know, just uh, be on the lookout for that collab, though. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Be on the lookout for that collab, though. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. Thank you, guys, for listening to another episode of Good Times with the boys. That is, I can never get used to that. It's so <laughs> weird. Hey, Josh, hey, hey, jo- hey, Josh, do you like that? It sounds like little, like little kisses, like little pet kisses. Well, I thought you were doing you, cause you looked at me and I thought <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was I didn't know it was a thing, but. Um, you know, yeah. I wasn't nervous. I was a man. All right, hey, come on, get us, get us out of here. Dog. All right, we got to get the fuck out of here. Uh, follow us on our Instagram and Twitter at underscore G-T-W-T-B. Hit us up on YouTube. Just search for Good Times with the Boys. We're available on Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud for your listening pleasure, as German says. And until next time. Bye bye. Later. I love you. 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 I love you.